Hi guys, and welcome back to uh, my classic movie of the week. Uh, it's spring is in the air, and the sun is shining, so um, it's a good day to watch a classic movie, I think. Um, because all days are good days to watch a classic movie. Uh, this week I am talking about La Belle et la Bête from 1946, uh, which is Beauty and the Beast in French. Um, my French is terrible, so <laughs> if you're listening to this and you speak French, don't judge me. Um, I wanted to say just a quick little shout out to a friend of mine who um, actually asked me if I was going to do this movie. She suggested it and I was like, that's crazy because that's actually the next one on my list. So um, that just goes to show how, <laughs> how much your friends kind of know you, I guess. So this film is directed by Jean Cocteau and it stars uh, Jean Marais and Josette Day. And it's basically, the plot is essentially Beauty and the Beast, which probably everybody probably knows that fairy tale. Um, basically a girl uh, take, takes her father's place as a prisoner of a beast and then um, he needs her to fall in love with him to break the curse and so um, she's unsure because you know he's a beast hang on my cat is doing something weird Great. so essentially uh, he's a prince under a curse but she doesn't 100% know that so the film is quite unusual it's um I feel like it's something special that you don't see all of the time. It was directed by Jean Cocteau, who was, um, I suppose you'd call him like a, a polymath or something now. He's, um, he was an artist, a poet, he wrote plays, he made films. So you kind of did a lot of different creative things. Um, and this film, feels has a different feel to a lot of other films especially of the same era it definitely doesn't feel like factory made or studio made um the images are very um a little bit more painterly than you might expect um i think somewhere i i read that he was inspired by gustave Dor, who um i probably didn't pronounce that correctly but he did illustrations for um many different things but I think some of his stuff was fairy tale like uh, subjects. Um, so, one thing about this film, just as a little note, a side note, um, I actually found it hard to get a copy um, to find this movie to watch uh, with English subtitles. Um, I could <laughs> I could find it with uh, I think it was Italian or Spanish dubbing which was a little bit trippy to, to watch a couple of seconds of that because it didn't quite match up and it didn't sound right. But um, I did manage to, I think BFI player has it. So if you are, um, I don't know if you can use that if you're outside of the UK, um, but that's just something to keep in mind that you might have trouble getting it. But there was a Criterion collection, I think, did a copy of it. So it's one of those ones that you might have a little trouble finding like for stream easily but um it is out there um so yeah i think it's nice to watch it with the french language because french has that kind of lyrical quality that really fits um you know obviously it's a french film so it just kind of it it gives it a better you kind of get a sense of the flow um, if that makes sense. Um, so while it is a, a classic fairy tale, it's so different. So it's kind of got like this, um, very dreamlike, strange quality to it. So there's lots of use of like light and shadow. Um, there's like real arms that stick out of the walls holding chandeliers, um, and there's like um there's like arms coming out of the table um so if you think of the disney version where like the 
the cops and all the furniture like come to life. This is more like human arms coming out of places and weird shadows and things. Um, so it's kind of disembodied and strange, but not in an ugly way. Um, so this film came out after um, after the German occupation. So uh, I'm not sure exactly where in history 1946 fits exactly. Some of you may know your World War II history really well. Um, but this film was meant to be like a... Um, like an antidote to the war and the German occupation and um, and that kind of thing. So it's got like a very, it's not like super nationalistic or anything, but it kind of harks back to a fairy tale time where, um, you know, romance and adventure and hopefulness and happy endings were um, something that people could believe in. But I think also, um, it's got like a light quality after all of the darkness. So there is shadows and things like that in this film, but it definitely feels like a return to something like maybe a national story or um, consciousness or something like that. Uh, Jean Cocteau was kind of challenged, I suppose, to make this film because people felt that artists at the time were kind of like elitist and a little bit separate from um, from the average person. You know, like maybe life didn't touch them in the same way that like the average working person had to deal with things. Um, so Cocteau wanted to prove that he was a man who could reach the average person and kind of bring French film back. Um, because obviously, you know, the English and American film industry was alive and kicking. Um, but the French, because they were occupied, their cinema was affected. So yeah, I think that one of the things about this film, like the, probably the most memorable film is just the way it looks. It's very like creepy and surreal. The way the, um, Prince looks is amazing. His like costume design and like the face, he sort of looks humanoid but very animal um and the costuming is amazing um there's a lot of like lavish costumes and the music has this kind of bombastic positive classical kind of style so you kind of get this overall um heightened storytelling it's it's just so different um there's a little bit that I love. There's a bit where the beast um, is sort of in the garden at, towards the start. And he just says, Hello, cher monsieur. And it's just really funny. Um, so yeah, Josette Day, I, she hasn't been in many things. Um, but she is really good in this. She has a very kind of... She, I think she sort of looks a bit like a model, but not. she still feels quite warm as a character. And the person who plays, um, the actor who plays the Beast, plays two characters in this. He plays a guy who's not very nice, and he also plays the Beast. So it's like this dichotomy of, like, um, the man who looks handsome is actually a Beast on the inside, and the man who is a Beast is, like, a prince on the inside. It's kind of a nice little... Um, like a little twist. Um, it's a very lavish glittering film, which I think there's lots of, you know, jewelry and richness. I think that is really nice. I can imagine like after the war that would have felt very refreshing. Um, and like a sort of escapism into a different time. And I think that's something that you can still get out of this film now, which is really nice. Um, there's a lot of like interesting little magic items as well. So, um, there's a mirror that shows the real face of the people look that look into it, not their physical face. So if they're ugly on the inside, it will make them look ugly. Um, there's jewelry that turns into just like rubbish or whatever in, if somebody tries to steal it, 
Um, and there's a really lovely scene where um, the Belle of the the beauty, um, she kind of, they put her on some kind of a trolley. So she's going down a hallway and there's these billowing curtains and she glides. So it's very strange. Um, there's some interesting talk about this film where people have felt like it's quite Freudian, um, an exploration of um, the like women's desire and it's kind of like you know she's it's her gaze the female gaze instead of her being the um the subject of the male gaze she's looking at the men in the film if that makes sense um some of you will have studied that the male gaze i remember doing that at uni it was very exciting um so yeah there's different layers to this if you want to look deeper or you can just enjoy the surface story as well. Um, there's a famous story about this where Greta Garbo saw this film and it, this film did quite well. Um, it was very well received and a lot of people cried at the end, which I think is nice. And Garbo stood up and she said, give me back my beast at the end of the premiere of the film because everybody loved the beast. He was so he's just like a great character he's um if you think of the beast in the cartoon disney version beauty and the beast he's kind of rough and tumble and ill-mannered and but he sort of has a heart of gold whereas this prince is much more he's just a beast on the outside he's still definitely a prince on the inside and so there's something about him that's kind of i think people feel he's sort of a lovely mix of like the genteel um, and the sort of roughly masculine, which I think is kind of a nice way of looking at it. Um, so yeah, I, some people have talked about the um, the way this film influenced the Disney film. So I think if you like the Disney Beauty and the Beast, this could be an interesting one to watch is like a difference if if you don't mind the subtitles i know some people hate subtitles um yeah it's a very um very interesting film there's also a link i think as well where you know gaston in the disney version loving his antlers and then there's lots of deer and diana the huntress like in this film so there's kind of an interesting link uh, as well um, so this film, I think, is one, it's not particularly obscure or anything, but, um, I don't know. I, I really, personally, I love fairy tale stories, especially because I think we think of fairy tales as being sort of princessy, but to me, they're often very much about finding hope in very dark places. And I think this film was made at a time when people were looking for hope and light and, um, you know, for good things after a dark time. And this film is very light and dark. Um, but it's also lavish and beautiful and strange. And it just feels so different to anything else that was sort of coming out of the time. So uh, it's definitely one to look out for if you can find it. As I was saying before, it's a little, I found it a little tricky to find, um, but not impossible because it is a very well-loved classic. It's definitely out there, but um, you can also find, if you're not sure, if you want to commit to watching it, there are some um, people talking about it on YouTube and things like that. There's some great discussions. There's one actually that I really liked, um, Essential Films. I'll put a link below um, to their talk about it because it's a little more, maybe more in depth or just a different aspect. Um, but yeah, if you can't maybe sit through it, you can definitely find some highlights to watch on YouTube. It's, um, if you're a film lover, it's definitely one to, um, take a look at. So yeah, Beauty and the Beast by Jean Cocteau.